What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 23 of Leon Live here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are good. I thought today we'd just start on our star player's profile, a profile that I don't feel like we show enough love. Fakir really has been, I think, the standout performer over the last two seasons. Of course, we started this season, last episode, season number two. If you missed it for whatever reason, do go catch up. Fakir, though, three goals, one assist, a 7.88 average rating. He's kind of matching the stats that he got last season, and I didn't think that was possible. Now, whether or not he can maintain that remains to be seen. And, uh, well, in the about a week that remains of the transfer window, we are, of course, going to look to hold on to him. Anyway, before we get into today's episode too much, although I will start continuing forward to our first game against Nantes, just uh, want to talk about a couple of things. The first thing being uh, something that was talked about last episode, which was basically uh, me expressing uh, some uh, kind of concerns, I guess, with doing the series daily and whether or not I should do a backlog or not. The overwhelming feedback from you guys was, if I need to take an off day, just take an off day, which I really do appreciate. I know that sounds like a really dumb thing to ask, but I do feel like I think this is a thing that a lot of YouTubers do. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to put out videos that people expect to have. And uh, it can kind of weigh over you a little bit. And there's some days where you just don't want to record a video or you can't quite get, get in the swing of things. And I think it does show. And uh, your feedback really has, I guess, made me uh, realise that actually if I do need to take a day where I don't record a Leon Live, I should just do that instead of forcing myself to do one out of kind of, I guess, fear and pressure uh, of disappointing you guys who watch. I really do appreciate that greatly. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the pictures of Leon players in the thumbnails of episodes. Now, obviously, this is something for those of you who perhaps have Photoshop or some degree of graphic design ability, but I need cutouts of players for the thumbnails, um, be it of, you know, photos that exist or, you know, pictures that you find or whatever of basically Leon players. These can be pictures that you cut out yourself. Maybe you can find some online for me. Um, you can find them all, um, obviously, uh, in the thumbnails themselves to see kind of what I'm looking for. But I need pictures of Leon players that are cut out with a transparent background and that are a PNG format. I realise I'm talking to a very narrow percentage of you listening right now. But if you are one of those people and you do want to help me, do some cutouts of Leon players and tweet them to me at Work the Space. Where, of course, if you're not already following me, you should be because it's the place to be. Um... But um, yeah, that would help me out greatly because I am running out of pictures of players and it does take me a little bit of time to cut out players' faces and I only have one pair of hands. Anyway, we have a Champions League group stage draw to start things here. We'll put it on automatic draw. We are a third seed in this group. Uh, or in this group stage, I guess. In terms of who I'd like, Spartak Moscow would probably be ideal. So we're looking at whatever group they come out in as being the group we'd like to be in. I mean, when you look at the rest of the kind of number one seeds here, I feel like Inter and Tottenham, perhaps the other two teams, you'd be happy to draw if there ever was such a thing. Good news is we can't be drawn in the same group as Liverpool because PSG are already in there. Group C and Group D, I don't like the look of. Of course, I think Juventus and Dortmund, we were in the same group as last year. Group F is definitely looking like a weaker one. C, D and E, I really dislike the look of. And H... There's not many good groups here. Where are we going to come out? Not Group D. Not again. Okay, Monaco there. Okay, I think we've dodged a bullet. I think we've dodged... If we go out in Group H... Oh, my God. The bullet has not been dodged. The bullet is Bayern Munich and Barcelona. If you were someone who on yesterday's episode when I asked for a prediction said Champions League semi-finals... You might want to reconsider. I mean, the good news is we aren't going to have AC Milan in our group. We are, however, going to have Raising Bull Sport Leipzig, which again is just... Oh, wait, no, it's, it's Salzburg even. It's the other Red Bull team. But, um, I mean, whatever way you look at it, it's not a kind group. Mm. That's going to be a challenge. Well, we've got a few big games, I guess, coming up suddenly. But, yeah, that is a tough group to say the very least. That is a bit of an understatement, I feel like, by the press. If we look here, we've actually got Barcelona in two games time away from home. Ah, uh, not ideal. I will send our assistant to go and discuss that with the press. Um, worth noting, we have got an international break after this nonce game, which I think is a good opportunity for us maybe to, you know, just do some admin work that I perhaps didn't do during the preseason. Um, maybe reevaluate some players' trainings, just, you know, look at how our players are developing on the whole. You can see a Kakaret uh, playing at 25 minutes, which is good. Uh, Ferreira played pretty well, got an assist. 
Uh, he, of course, on loan at Socho. How's he done so far? One goal, two assists, a 7.06 rating. That's not too bad for a player we picked up for £300,000. Really hope he can de develop playing in the league below us at Socho, who do have good facilities and hopefully become, you know, an integral part of our team. And Dombele doing well in training. Also, DJ and Olmo doing well. DJ looking like a pretty good striking option. Olmo, on the other hand, I really like the look of this guy. He's been putting in some good performances in training. Obviously, a kind of very kind of central player, but can play as an inside forward. We're training him to play inside forward on the right. Dembele trying to force a move again. Not a massive fan of his conduct so far this preseason in trying to force a move. Porto bid thirty-four million pounds for him. Let's offer him out for for seventy and just see if anyone nibbles. I doubt they will, but I don't really want to sell him for anything less. Benfica make an offer for Endombele of twenty-six million pounds. I have no intention of selling Endombele. Um, I feel like Dembele himself is perhaps a slightly easier player to replace, whereas Endombele is pretty much irreplaceable as far as I'm concerned. Young French player, incredible box-to-box -box midfielder with great consistency in important matches. Absolutely no reason to sell him whatsoever. Uh, you can see a Benfica desperate to try and get hold of him. We're going to keep pushing maybe their asking price up and up and up and see where that leads us. Just looking through the players here to see if there's anyone great who our kind of staff have recommended. Benedetto is an interesting one. Uh, he's a very good player in football manager terms, you can see here, but non-EU. I think we might have some problems getting him anyway within our current budget. Of course, the transfer window is still open. I talked about this last episode and indeed the episode before it, really. It's been quite a quiet window. Um, our net spend is about £14 million, slightly more than that actually. But um, in reality, that is not a massive amount of money that we're paying out of pocket over the summer. We've we've operated on a budget. We've not really had to sell anyone, which has been nice. We've had a little bit of interest here. You can see Benfica offering £38.5 million for Endombele. He's just not for sale, so I'm not even going to um, you know, entertain them with a response. Anyway, we've got the first game of today's game. It's against Nantes. We're at home for this. Um, as you can see, we're in third place. They're in fourth, so they're not going to be pushovers by any means in terms of the tactic i think we're going to go with the controlling 4-2-3-1 at least to start this game we are going to be without Bertrand Traore out on the right hand side i think in his kind of replacement i mean we've got a few options here for who we could bring in actually in the wide areas we could go with terrier we could go with saint maximin um terrier's done a little bit better but actually i'm going to go with marcus rashford i think um I talked a little bit about this last season, but I'm not the biggest fan of having loney kind of players who you rely on quite heavily, you know, to play. That is almost a situation we find ourselves in here um, with Rashford, but Rashford is just, I think, a cut above. And additionally, um, it would be good to maybe just build up a bit of a relationship with Manchester United just to help us if we do want to maybe sign Rashford in the future or if we want to loan players off them, you know, in years to come. Making sure that we at least stick to the agreement and making him her rotation option is going to be important. And additionally, when it comes to the right-hand side, inside forwards, yes, we have Terrier. Yes, we have St. Maximin, but they're both right-footed, as is Rashford. So there isn't really a standout nailed-on player. When it comes to the left inside forward, I think things change a little bit. But Rashford's a player with real quality, obviously, incredible pace. I want to give him a little bit of a chance because if Dembele does force a move, in the last few days of the transfer window, I am going to be maybe relying on him for goals if we can't sign an adequate replacement. The referee's blowing his whistle, and I think we're going to VAR for a potential penalty here. Um, it was a free kick from deep for us. I think there was a foul in the box. Whether or not it's going to be given remains to be seen. Pape Soare, the potential, um, I guess, criminal in this case who committed the offence in the box. What is the ref going to give? He is... Uh, going to give the penalty, and uh, he's only going to get a warning. A little bit fortuitous there, perhaps. Fakir steps up. Can he score? He hits it. Lovely penalty. Another goal for his collection. Great start for us. Six minutes gone. An early goal to hopefully settle us into this match. Nantes have started the season well. Well, so have we, haven't we? We're unbeaten, of course. This would um, be a fifth game into the season unbeaten if we could win it. We've got another chance here for Kier. Back post to Dembello. Nods it into the danger area. Memphis with an effort that's blocked. Can we make anything happen here for Kier to Toussaint? I feel like the chance is gone. 
We're creating opportunities though, and that is something to be positive about going forward here, I feel like. And Dombele to two start again. I mean, we're at least keeping on the attack for now. Dembele out on the left, crosses it in. Rashford tries to nod it down. Dealt with by them. I feel like that is going to be all she wrote here. But at least in the early phases of play, we are, well, we're taking the game by the scruff of the neck. We've got a set piece here. Fakir, back post, header were not far over at all. I think that was Wallace at the back post. I'd be amazed if it wasn't Wallace at the back, of, back post in many ways. He's just been the nailed on player there. I mean, so far, so good. They're yet to have a shot on goal. They've um, not really created anything either, whereas we have, of course, while we're on top in a game like this, it's crucial we do find, you know, another goal to break through. If there's one thing we've shown so far this season, it's that defensively we're not, you know, an impenetrable force like perhaps we were last year. Um, we obviously conceded three against Monaco. We've drawn two games in our first four. Really, this would be a disappointing start to the season if it wasn't for the fact that PSG lost their first two games of the season. We have them and their patchy form perhaps to thank a little bit for that. Anyway, coming up to half-time here, 1-0 is the scoreline. Massively, massively on top in this game. I don't think I want to go more attacking here. Um, I'm just going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Keep them fired up. Don't let complacency slip in. There is still a job to be done here in the second half, even if... Nantes haven't done a great deal. I do wonder if they might go more attacking as the game goes on. Maybe we can then punish them. Wallace, back post header. I feel like the keeper should have and probably could have done better there. But we're not going to complain. It's Fakir with an assist. What a player he has turned out to be. And while Wallace, proving perhaps that he's not a one-season wonder at centre-back. Fakir whips in the ball. Wallace leaps like a salmon. Stings like a bee. I'm not sure how that analogy works in this situation. But it's 2-0. And, uh, well, that did not take long into the second half to break the deadlock. It'll be interesting now to see if Nantes, away from home, elect to try and do something and try and get back into this game, or whether or not they perhaps play damage limitation as this game fizzles out, potentially. And now we're gone. We can make some subs, I feel like. In terms of what we're going to do, Rashford's been pretty underwhelming. We'll bring in St. Maxim in for him. Out on the left, we'll bring in our, I think, in fact, no, we won't. We're going to bring in, uh, I was going to bring in Terry. I'm actually going to bring in Joseph Martinez. Terry has already played three games off the bench this year. Let's give Martinez, our backup kind of striker, some game time. In an ideal world, Martinez finds some form and he becomes the rotation option with Dembele as Rashford is a bit of a backup. Similarly to last year, I guess, as much as I really rate Rashford as a loan signing, I don't want to be over-reliant on him. I don't, certainly don't want him to be a core part of the first team who we have no real chance of extending the deal of into next year. You know, you really don't want to have a year where you loan in a player, become reliant on them, and then they're just not there the following season and you're looking to replace a player you never owned. I'd much rather give, you know, players like Joseph Martinez a bit of a chance to see what he can do. And well, we've got a chance here. Memphis, with the initial effort, it's saved at the second time of asking as well. I mean, that is about as close to going over the line as you're going to get. I do think Memphis probably should have scored at the second time of asking it. I don't think the keeper actually moved for it. It kind of just hit him. But Nantes hanging on in this game. We've got one more sub. We'll take off Endombele and bring in Awar at box-to-box -box midfielder. Again, just about giving a younger player a bit of game time with a two-goal cushion, with how dominant we've been. I feel like this game should be all kind of wrapped up and done with 10 minutes left. Of course, if they score, squeaky bun time commences, but we are still on the attack. Ball, well, pings around an hour on off the bench. Nice finish. Outside the box, bit of a long range one. Didn't really hit it with power. I do wonder if the goalkeeper here was just caught out, but he strikes it home, doesn't he? Tete to St. Maximin. Little back heel. Ball cleared out unconvincingly. Falls kindly to Awa. He tucks it away. A cool, calm, collected finish by the Frenchman in the midfield. And, uh, well, that is ideal. It has just dawned on me that with us playing Barcelona, Lengler has an opportunity to play against his former club, of course. Signed from Barcelona in the summer for £7 or £8 million. He's looked very good so far, as has Awa, who, well, sets up St. Maximin for our fourth of the game. This is what we needed. This is really what we needed. St. Maximin and Awa on off the bench now contributing with goals. And, uh, well, really nice build-up play here. Defensively... Nantes a little all over the place. The finish questionable. Well, the goalkeeping questionable. The finish wasn't great, was it, by St. Maximin? But it hits the back of the net. It ripples in the back there. And 
that's all that really matters. I don't care how it goes in as long as we score. 4-0 up. Now, now we sit and hope that maybe PSG slipped up again. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? Because they lost two of their opening four games of the year. Both of them, actually, their opening two games, they lost 1-0. We, on this occasion, win 4-0. A good little performance helps our goal difference perhaps a little. And, well, not started the season very well up in fourth. And given the fact we did draw, you know, two games that I feel like we probably should have won, um, a nice way to bounce back. You can see here, uh, PSG did win. They won 2-1 against Nim. Not a convincing performance. Actually, uh, a 90th minute goal for them. And, well, Nim actually got a consolation in the 92nd minute. But... Yeah, they only won by a one-goal margin against the team bottom of the league. So I feel like that's a reason for optimism, perhaps. In terms of our players out on loan, Jadas played uh, 90 minutes. Kanate had another exceptional game playing for Lille, who I assume are still top of the league. Markovic played OK at centre-back. Cornet playing football as well, got a goal and an assist in this game. Wallace, our player of the match in our game. And, well, the Joker transfer window has started... And our transfer window closes in just two days' time. Will we have any late deadline day bids on players where I panic and feel like I have to replace them? I'm still interested in offering Dembele out just because he seems so desperate to force a move. I'm not sure if we're ever going to get an offer. I don't really want to sell him for less than £6 million. For Keir winning Player of the Month, let's give him some praise for that. We will scout um, the... Um, the Champions League. I'm going to look for hot prospects as well. And uh, we'll also scout the uh, European under-21s qualifying. That could be a pretty good competition to keep an eye on. Dembele just... I don't know. Dembele's a good player, don't get me wrong. But he didn't light up the league last year with his kind of performances in the league. And even this year, he's not been incredible. Um, and given the fact he's trying to force a move, he is injury prone. If I got an offer of 60 million... I'd probably let him go. I don't think we're necessarily going to get that kind of money uh, as an offer for him. But I can hope. I don't really want to sell him for anything less than 50. Certainly if it came in between 50 and 60, I might give it a second thought. I mean, the reality here is we've got one day left of the transfer window. Anyway, you can see here Dembele set to stay at the club. Uh, Dembele has said... Um, that we've, well, we're buying less interested. He now wants to stay at the club. I mean, that's kind of typical, isn't it? The question is, will you sign a new contract now? Are you unhappy enough that you don't want to stay? How much money does he want? He wants £85,000 to stay. It's a lot of money, isn't it? It is a lot of money. And that wage rise when he plays for the national team is a bit high for me as well. If you took 70 grand, I'd be happy. I can't see him going down as low as 70, but I want to try and push him for it. As much as I have been just trying to sell him and I've gone on about how he hasn't lit up the world, the reality is he is a very, very good French player. He's only 23. He has a lot of potential. He is a big game player. He has got potential. He wants £74,000 a week. That would make him the highest earner at the club. I can't justify that. Lots of bonuses included in the offer we're giving him. He's still got four years left on his current deal, so I don't even necessarily have to agree a deal here. If he was to kick up a fuss about this deal falling through, potentially, it wouldn't be the end of the world, although he has agreed a deal. I was going to say it wouldn't be the end of the world because the transfer window is going to be closing, so we can't even really force a move. Um, some interest apparently in Depay, as, as I've just said. It'll have to be a really good offer for me to even consider it. I mean, how much would I sell Depay for? Probably like 60 million? We've already offered him out for 60. Let's offer him out for 60 again. It's worth testing the waters. I don't think he'll kick up a fuss about us trying to get rid of him. You can see no team interested in him. Kind of to be expected. Awusu is still at the club, which is a tiny bit concerning because I did kind of want to sell him. He's on just too much money for a player who I don't think has the potential to ever really feature in the first team. Anyway, it is deadline day here. There's nine hours left of the window. No one is interested in him. Um, hmm. We'll keep hold of him for now. Apparently I did offer him a new contract at some point recently, which is probably a mistake. To be honest, he doesn't look like the worst player in the world. And he probably is worth more than the money we're offering him out for currently. But the reality is that he's just a little bit overpriced for what we have. We've apparently been linked with this player who plays for Nancy, Keita. 
Is he listed as their hot prospect? Apparently he is. He does look pretty good, doesn't he, to be fair to him. I'm a little bit shocked we won't give him more transfer budget to spend in the window. I don't think our wage kind of spend has actually gone up really this season. Um, I think most of the spend was counteracted by the players we sent out on loan. And we only spent about £15 million. Pounds. Apparently we've been linked with more young players who I'm not familiar with at all. So we'll get scout reports on them because they might be good if we're being linked with them. But I don't think we're going to be making any late deadline day sweeps for 15-year-olds at least today. I guess, is it worth just looking at the, the transfer market to see if there's anyone who's just like transfer listed who I've just not given any thought to whatsoever? I mean, Oscar is apparently transfer listed. I can't see us being able to get him. Giovanni Simeone. I mean, he's an incredible player, isn't he? You can see here, PSG signed him for £26 million. Is he transfer listed? Why is he transfer listed after they just signed him? Hmm. Did they just sign him? They did this window. I mean, that's interesting. Why is he unhappy? Pleased to have joined PSG, expecting to leave the club in the near future. Can we loan him? We can, but we have to pay all of his wages. I did notice, actually, here, we have the option to ask the board to sign a player. Now, Simeone is almost certainly out of our budget, but I do wonder if there's any players who are transfer listed who might be in our budget who I could get the board to go out and sign. You know, maybe a spare of the moment, last minute transfer swoop. The question is, what player would I want? <laughs> uh, and is it even realistic to expect the board to go and sign them this late in the window? I did talk about getting in a goalkeeper, didn't I? I know someone mentioned Rykovic. I think that's how you spell his name. I'm trying to remember his first name. It's, it's the Serbian player. He used to play for Tel Aviv. Does he still play for Tel Aviv, Rajkovic, the goalkeeper? Let's have a check. He does. Pre-drag Rajkovic. I mean, he could be a pretty good backup goalkeeper. He was recommended by one of you guys in the comment section. He used to be a lot better in FM. He's still pretty good now, to be fair to him. He has a minimum release clause of 4.4 million. He does look pretty solid. And we do need a backup goalkeeper. I can't ask the board to sign him, though. And as a result, I think we might struggle to be able to afford him unless I was to do something with instalments, potentially. And then maybe offer a little bit above his release clause. Uh, they rejected that offer. Apparently, Rykovic is now kicking up a fuss. I don't think we would be able to sign him unless we hit his release clause. I think a backup keeper was kind of the last thing that I really wanted. Don't get me wrong, we do have some okay choices in goal. But it is an area of the pitch that I have perhaps not given enough thought to. If we just look at goalkeepers here, a backup is Matteo Jorgelin. And he's okay. He's good. Don't get me wrong. But at 29, he's a good backup. But if he if we had a long-term injury to Lopez, we might have a bit more of a concern. Anthony here, Raciopi, maybe is how you say his name. He looks okay as well, but he's just not good enough for this level of football that we currently play at. So I'm a little bit kind of like actually... Decide. I'm, I'm realising here with minutes left of the transfer window, mm, maybe I would like to get in a goalkeeper. Unfortunately, transfer listed goalkeepers are just not that common. Um, just looking on the loan list here to see if there's maybe one we could get until January. We could go with someone like Joel Pereira from Manchester United. Depending on how much of their wages they want us to cover, they only want us to cover half of them. Um, let's go to the next transfer window with him as a backup and see if we can get him in. Um, I'm not going to have a chance to scout him, but at least just at first glance, he looks like he'd be a pretty good backup. He's also Portuguese, so not dissimilar to Lopez. He would also just help as a kind of immediate, I guess, solution to the backup goalkeeper position. It's unlikely we're going to call upon him in truth, but at £7,500 a week, it's probably just a good idea to have him as a goalkeeper in our team. You know, there's literally no harm in having him here. He is, I think, better than George Lynn. Certainly going to be competition for him. If we do a quick comparison here, Joel Pereira and George Lynn. Yeah, you can see here, better distribution, better communication. Not quite good when it comes to his mentals, perhaps. And not a dissimilar player by any means, but um, definitely a better player, even if it's not by a massive amount. 
And, uh, well, again, another player from Manchester United who might just help us build a relationship with them. Um, getting asked about the Rashford loan deal. I feel like that is a very good loan deal. Whether or not Rashford's going to feature a load in the first team, I'm not sure. Kind of bought him in initially, thinking we might sell Joseph Martinez and potentially even lose Dembele. As it turns out, we've kept hold of both of them, but hey, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You can see here, PSG, total spend, £217 million. They brought in Lucas Hernandez, um, who is absolutely insane, to be fair to him. But uh, that is an eye-wateringly large amount of money. and um, An amount of money that, if we're being entirely realistic, we can't really compete with now, can we? Anyway, we've got to uh, register a team here for the Champions League. So I'm going to go through and do this here. I'm hoping that we can register the majority of our team, but that might be a bit of a problem. We'll see how we get on here. Um, I feel like we might have to cut a few players from the team. Indeed, we are going to have to. Um, do we have any players under the age of 20 who don't need to be registered? I don't think we have all that many kind of players who fulfill the criteria because they need to have been at the club for a minimum period of time. Looking at it, Awar is the only player who fulfills that kind of, I guess, need. So, we are a little bit more limited in terms of who we can register. With that in mind, I'm going to have to maybe cut one or two players who are backups of all backups. Um, hmm. I've got to think here, haven't I? Who would I ideally like to get rid of? Or not I say get like to get rid of, but... I'm going to have to get rid of. You can see here, we're going to have to have Georgelin registered instead of Pereira because Georgelin is registered as homegrown at club and we need a minimum of four players like that. So he is one of those four. Um, I'm thinking that actually Trincao is probably the man who's going to have to give way to Dembele. That means that in terms of players who won't feature, uh, Trincao, DJ and Pereira are the only players. I think that's okay. In the final third, we have plenty of strength in depth. You can see in terms of natural forwards, Depay, Dembele, Martinez and Rashford, not a bad front four in terms of striking options to have to choose from. It's a bit of a shame that we can't include everyone, um, but it'll be okay. Anyway, we're getting asked about the Joel Pereira deal. Um, I think I think he's just a smart addition, you know. Uh, we we I mean goal, goalkeeper injuries really aren't that common in FM. You guys know I don't play with a goalkeeper on the bench, but um, I feel I feel like just in general um, he is going to be a, a more than adequate backup now, com especially compared to what we had. And he's a low risk transfer, not a big fee. If he doesn't play, it's not the end of the world, is it? Notice there that Fakir is well, he's given us more time to keep the promise of course we told him that we'd sell him for 90 million pounds if the right offer came in it didn't so he's going to remain at the club at least for now and uh well we go into an international break so we'll keep an eye on our players and how they perform hopefully a few of the younger players are going to start breaking into their national teams you can see here markovic has made his international debut for serbia that is huge that is really really good Great to see that play for Orgs A, you know, getting regular first team football at a senior division here in Europe and kind of a top league as well in the French league uh, has really seen him thrown into the international kind of spotlight. I feel like had we kept him in the reserves, he just wouldn't have got that opportunity. And playing football at a higher level like that is only ever going to be a good thing for players' development. Anyway, we can continue on here. We've got Rem in our next game. They are predicted to finish 19th and of course following that, we then have a game against Barcelona. Yeah, a nice easy game potentially to end today's episode away from home. I think we will do that as the last game today. That will then open up the game against Marseille, uh, against our you know one of our big rivals, a team who have been a bit of a fawn in our side. We can open up with that next time. You can see here uh, Moreno's putting some good performances in training. So far, he's looking like a great little addition. A 7.4 rating for him, of course. We're training him to play left fullback on attack. But um, he's kind of doing exactly what we wanted him to do. We've brought him in as that option to replace Marcel. I expect him and Ferland Mendy to rotate a little bit as the season goes on. For example, the game against Rem here that's coming up at home. I think we might do a little bit of rotation, particularly with that Barcelona game on the horizon. It kind of just makes sense to rotate the team around a little bit. But um, yeah, it's so far so good for him. I'm not actually sure how Lenglet's done for us at left centre-back. Of course, we brought him in from Barcelona. He is a player who 
it would be fair to say we weren't sure exactly what we were going to get with him because his average rating last year had been so poor in a, well, the Spanish first division in La Liga. You can see so far for us, five appearances, a 7.38 average rating. I can't complain one little bit about that. He is doing exactly what we want him to do. If he wasn't to hit the ground running, we did have Marcelo to come in at centre-back, but it does look like the 32-year-old is just going to be playing a backup role for us this year. Which, on the one hand, is a bit of a shame, because he was just a great veteran for us last year, a regular player we could play, and he was, you know, just very much had his head screwed on. At the same time, I knew he was always going to be a tough player to replace, and at least... Uh, from what we've seen so far this year, Lenglet looks like he is going to be a good replacement. Anyway, you can see here, Lucas Romero, first international goal for Argentina. M my son, I am very pleased with you. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep scoring and you'll be an Argentina legend in no time. Dembele signs a new contract. I know it's not a small amount of wages, but I feel like to lock him down is good. We weren't you know, receiving the best offers in the world for him, if we're being honest, from the likes of Bayern Munich. In signing a new contract, if a team does want to come in with an offer in January, it's going to have to be a mighty good one for us to consider selling him. You can see here, Rykovic does look like he could be a pretty good player for us to sign. It's a shame that we couldn't, you know, I guess, hit his release clause, at least with our current transfer restrictions. I'm hoping that given the club's a very, very good club kind of balance... Um, but come January, maybe we'll be given a little bit more money to play with. I feel like in January, it's unlikely that I'd want to sell one of our kind of big players that we have. Um, just because it wouldn't make a great deal of sense in January. I'm not, I don't mind selling a big player in the summer when you have time to replace them. But I always feel like selling a player for a large sum of money in January is just always, you know, opening yourself up to underperforming. Particularly if you're going strong in the league and it is a key player. Anyway, Kanate playing for the French under-20s at centre-back. Not the best performance on the international stage for him. You can see Rykovic is still trying to force that move away from Tel Aviv. He does look very, very good, doesn't he, at 23? The fact he's the same nationality of, as Markovic as well could be interesting for the kind of longer-term future, you know, if we could have a Serbian international centre-back but also the Serbia international goalkeeper. That could be a nice bit of synergy there. Anyway, you can see a Depay not happy with the quality of his training. He wants less strength training. I'm not going to change my schedule just for one player. Tete not happy about being trained on his passing. That is fair enough. We can take him off that. I think, at least. I did notice that Moise Keane is a player who our scouts keep suggesting. I really like this guy in football manager terms. Now, it looks like he hasn't improved a great deal here, but you can see his value is very low. His wages are low. I do wonder what kind of offer Juventus would want for him. We can ask the chairman to try and sign him. Oh, okay. Well, I thought I'd just ask the chairman on a whim, and the chairman's like, yeah, I agree. Moise Keane is the type of player that a signing that other teams would take notice of. I mean, if we could sign Moise Keane, that would be incredible. Um, I like the look of this guy a lot. Very, very good striker. Wouldn't join us till January. I mean, I'm kind of now scared that they're going to offer like £20 million for him and we're just not going to be able to afford it. Let's have a look. What offer have they put in for him? Uh, £33 million. Where's that money come from? So you weren't willing to increase the... I mean, if they actually sign him for £33 million, that's is that disastrous or is that amazing? Let me know in the comments, if we get Moise Keane for 33 million, is that disastrous or is that amazing? I mean, the fact that the chairman wants to back me like that is fantastic news. The offer's been accepted. We've offered him a four-year deal. I mean, I don't know how to feel about it, because on the one hand, he's an incredible player, is Moise Keane. But on the other hand, he isn't top notch right now he's gonna to have to improve quite a lot and additionally it's 33 million pounds which i probably could have signed on two or three other players of a similar similar quality myself i'm conflicted how should i feel please do let me know please do let me know because i'm not sure how i should feel um I didn't mean to praise your new position. I meant to just praise your training. 
my bad. My bad, Endombele. Oh my gosh, if we end up actually signing Moise Keane for 33 million, I might cry. I don't know if there'll be tears of joy, sadness or conflict. On the one hand, he's a player who just fits my kind of overall squad philosophy and I really like as a player in FM. On the other hand, it's £33 million. <laughs> How should I feel? Right, I've got to try and reset mentally. We've got this game here against Rem. Now, there is an argument to say I should just play the best 11, you know, for this kind of game. Um, of course, we have got Rashford injured, which is a little bit of a shame. I think we'll bring Trincao onto the bench. In fact, no, we won't. I've lied. We'll bring Martinez onto the bench. But um, with us having Barcelona in, that, well, four days' time, not a big recovery time, and given the fact we're coming off an international break, I think we're going to have to rotate things a little bit just to preserve player fitness. I'm actually going to give Denea, I think, a start at centre-back. Uh, centre yeah, we'll go at centre-back. Um, I'm going to give two starts uh, a rest here. I'm bringing Lucas Romero. I'm going to bring in St. Maximin for Bertrand Traore, who's really not match fit. There's a few players who are in the reserves who I'd quite like to give some game time to, potentially. I think we'll actually drop Fakir for today's game. Uh, not Fakir, sorry. Depay for today's game completely. In fact, he can probably come in for Traore on the bench because Traore is lacking fitness. But in the wide attacking midfield area, I'm going to try Daniel Olmo and see what he can do. He's performed well in training. He definitely deserves a chance. And then we'll play St. Maximin on the right. I think we'll keep Fakir in the team, but we will play Terrier starting up top instead of Dembele. Um, I'm also going to take our end on Bele and play Papa Chiek, I think, for this match. And uh, how do I want to change things here? Actually, we'll, we'll play Denaire at right back, and then I'm going to take out Wallace, I think, despite how well he started the season. And I'm going to play Gananon, and I'm going to play him alongside Marcelo. And then have Mendy at left back. Now I know we're rotating the team a lot here. But we do have a big team with a lot of players who are more than capable of stepping up and playing at this level against a team who really are struggling this season. I have kind of absolute faith in them to step up in this game and show us exactly what they're made of. So let's see us, well, action the plan. I do also wonder if in this game, I know they're playing a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2 depending on how you want to look at it. I think for this game... Uh, we will uh, switch to the more attacking 4-2-3-1 variant that we have. You know, gamble players a little higher up the pitch. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this works because they are playing a two-striker system and we are kind of just going to mark them like for like at the back. So there is always going to be the op kind of possibility they hit us on the counter. But I'm hoping that we can just overwhelm them in the final third and limit the counter-attacking opportunities. We'll have to see how we get on. Early set piece after a minute for Keir. Back post, Nanon's there. Not far over the crossbar for him. Of course, making his debut joined us. Really is a bit of a backup centre-back. Similar to, well, Denea, I guess, in squad status. But, uh, well, with us rotating things a little bit, trying to get some fresh legs in the team, one eye, I think, cast ahead to the game against uh, Barcelona. I'm going to be interested to see how we do perform defensively because we are rotating the entire back four. And, uh, well, they're potentially playing for a spot in the first team, certainly to be the go-to backup centre-back. Anyway, Denea drifts inside, hits the woodwork, rebound maybe, Danny Olmo. Welcome to the team, my friend. Apparently that's his second goal of the season. What, what, when did he score before? Oh, he scored for the reserves. Does that count? I don't feel like it does. Either way, fantastic for him to get on the score sheet. I'm not sure if Terrier was given the assist for this. Denea, with the initial effort, hits it, and I guess the spin-off, it just makes it go off at a funny angle. Eventually, the ball somehow falls to Danny Olmo, who tucks it away. £2.5 million we spent on him. If he's value in the market, Moise Keenan is definitely not. You can see here, PSG 1-0 up against Nice. We're hoping that Nice can do us a favour. We hope that a lot of teams can do us a favour through the season, in case you haven't realised... Um, we, we need teams to pick up points against PSG. We need everyone to, you know, make it a team effort. You know, help us out. Help us um, overcome, I guess, the, the big team who are top of the league. I feel like we are the, the, the underdogs of this story. And everyone loves an underdog. They should be helping us in any way possible. Anyway, I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy. We are one goal up. And Rem have looked pretty limited in terms of what they've done. We ourselves haven't created a great deal in terms of quality chances. I'm hoping that as this game goes on, maybe we can make our attacking dominance show. 
I noticed Terry is on a 6.4 rating, so we might take him out of the team. I have been thinking about maybe changing up the striking role in our system from an advanced forward to potentially a complete forward, just to see if they drop in a little bit more and do a little bit more in the final third. We might have a penalty here. We're going to VAR. I'm doing the hand signal, but yeah, I am weighing up maybe try, ch trying to change the um, striker role in the team, just because um, I feel like, in general, we've got so many goals from our attacking midfielders, but when you compare it, I guess, to our striker... And I do wonder if just a change in role, maybe something like a complete forward, might just benefit them a little bit more. We are going to get a penalty here after video review. I assume it's going to be for Keir to step up and take it. Indeed it is. I think this is already his third or fourth penalty of the season. Can he find the back of the net? That's the question. He steps up, he hits it. Again, not the most convincing penalty in terms of placement, but the power has seen it fly in. It's a fifth of the season for him. He is absolutely loving it. And, uh, well, he just smashes it home into the bottom corner, doesn't he? Wheels away in jubilation, and quite rightly too. That was a great little goal from the penalty spot. And now we're gone. We can relax a little bit here. Let's try that kind of change that I mentioned. Let's try a complete forward on attack. And we're going to bring in Martinez to see what he can do in that role. Additionally, uh, St. Maximin on a booking. I'm going to take him out for our... Uh, I don't think we're going to make another change here. At least not right now. We'll hold on to the last one for the last 25 minutes in case we need it. If Martinez scores, I will be tempted to maybe play a complete forward more often. It's a role that I really do like in FM, the complete forward role. I feel like it and the advanced forward are kind of my go-tos if I'm going to play a lone striker. Both I've seen kind of differing success with. I feel like an advanced forward can sometimes get a little isolated, whereas a complete forward is particularly good on players you know who do have an element of creativity about them players who aren't just you know one trick ponies who can shoot and only shoot and well in modern football most strikers do have that capability to drop deeper and be involved in earlier phases of play maybe we will see that what we are going to see is Danny Olmo with his second goal of the game I mean maybe he is saying hey boss remember me yeah I've been doing well in training you've been praising me lots Give me a shot in the first team. I mean, we've given him a chance here and he's taken it with open arms. Papa Ciek with the initial trademark long shot. Too hot for the keeper to handle. It was spilt. And Olmo is on for a hat-trick. He scored two goals so far from either wing. Having started out uh, on the left, if I'm not mistaken. We've now moved him onto the right where he scored. I mean, could he get the hat-trick for Kier? Hits it. Lovely goal by him. Marcelo with the assist. That is his sixth of the year. Unfortunately... Whilst we are 4 0 up here, I did notice and catch a glimpse uh, in the top left. PSG's latest score, they're winning 5 0. So it's not looking like a particularly nice result for us there. Do you get nice result because they're playing nice? Okay, yep. I want to clarify that that was a pun in case people didn't realise. I'd feel bad if you didn't realise. Uh, you know, when, when you know, this comedic genius like that, sometimes it can be hard to spot and find. So uh, I've got to draw attention to it whilst I face palm internally. Papa Cech. Let's try and change the subject here. <laughs> An interesting long shot by Cech then. I thought it might squeeze in. There was a second where it didn't look like the keeper was going to get down to it. Unfortunately, he did deny the long shot. Perhaps on the flip side, fortunately for us, the ball has been given straight back to us. We might be bringing it forward again here. Cech hits it from range again. The keeper is not looking particularly convincing, is he? The fact that Czech is willing to shoot from about 40 yards out is almost a tiny bit concerning in a way. Debatably wasteful. At the same time, at four goals up, I can't really knock his confidence to even try from there. But um, he's a, he's an interesting player, Papa Czech, because he has got a lot of potential as a boxer, box midfielder. But with him being in his early 20s and as just having other players who are, I think, just better and have perhaps a bit more potential... It has been a little bit troublesome to, you know, find a spot for him in the team. I mean, you can see here he's on a 6.9 rating this match. But um, he is a player who I do value quite highly. Anyway, we'll make our last change here. We'll take off Fick here just to protect him from injury. He's probably not going to be particularly happy given the fact he was on a hat-trick. But I want to keep him safe. I want to take him under our wing and preserve him for the game against Barcelona that's on the horizon. Because it's a game where I do want us to be at full strength. Great little performance here, though. 4-0 win. Looks like Lil might have slipped up as well. I think I might have spied us going top of the table with that result. 
Of course, there is a chance they are playing a later game this weekend. We'll find out in just a second. Uh, you can see here, how did Lille get on? They drew against Bordeaux, so they do have an identical record to us, but our goal difference is significantly better. You can see in terms of teams trailing, you've got the likes of, obviously, PSG, Toulouse, a bit of a surprise package. Newly promoted Auxerre only lost one of their opening six games of the year. That's a particularly impressive start. On the other side of things, Monaco, five draws. That is unbelievably disappointing. They will be frustrated about that. Even if they have had, you know, difficult games, I mean, it's still not really good enough, is it? Canate put in an OK performance. Corne, mm, average, did did lose 5-0. Um, you can see here, Markovic, 8.0 rating for him. A very, very impressive display. Olmo was given man of the match for us. He is a player who I think we might have to start putting on the bench and see what he can do. He has uh, put in a few good performances. Well, I say a few good performances. One good performance, really, but it was well worthy of being noticed. We've signed Moise Keane for £33 million. I've got my hands covering my eyes as if it's going to go away. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, has that gone from our balance yet or do we wait till January to lose it? I think we wait till January to lose it. Due to concerns about our wage budget, they've already decreased the, the, the money. It's not, not ideal. I mean, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love him. He looks wicked. But we probably are going to need to sell Joseph Martinez now. I love how consistent he is. He already speaks French. Am I right thinking Moise Keane is partially French? Uh, I'm, I'm not correct at all. I'm talking out my buttocks. He's part, part Ivorian. Hopefully, he's going to continue to play for Juventus's under 23s. So at least he's playing regular first team football, which will help his development. I'm not convinced he's a £33 million player, but it was the board's decision, not mine, so I don't think feel like I can lose my job over it or I can be completely to blame, even if I did ask them to sign him. Disappointing to see Antonio Marin not playing too regularly in the Dijon first team. I did notice there he was playing for their under-19s. I'm hoping that over the course of the year he will develop. It did look like, just from clicking on his profile, he has actually improved a decent amount, which is good to see. But, uh, well, we're going to need further improvements, I think, if we want to see him playing in our first team next year. Tete, are you going to be fit for the Barcelona game? It's going to be close. With that in mind, we'll rest him. Fakir's actually, of course, suspended for this first game, and Rashford's out injured. I'm tempted to do something a little bit potentially unprecedented. I am very tempted to play Olmo at centre-attacking mid based entirely off that last performance. I feel like he's been performing well in training. Granted, his fitness is very much lacking. I didn't realise how low his condition is. I wonder if he's just played in the reserves for a game. We'll rest him. He might not be fit enough to start. But uh, definitely worthy of the spot on the bench. Awa would be obviously the go-to player. I think that is what we're going to have to do purely because of fitness concerns. Um, in terms of Rashford's injury, because we've already got a few attacking options now, I probably need to look to bring in another centre mid. So it's going to be Pape Ciak on the bench, along with Lucas Romero. Looking at it here, there are a few players struggling. It's players who played in the reserve team as well, it seems like, for the most part. All of those players who are in a, a well in our first team, I'm just going to set to be rested. So Pape Ciak and Mendy, the two players we're really looking at here. All in all, though, with the exception of the uh, the injury to... or not injury, sorry, the suspension to Fakir and the injuries to Rashford, I feel like we're in an OK spot. Lacazette is singing Depay's praises. Apparently, Depay has been a player in form, and it's difficult to argue against that. He started the season very well. You can see here a 7.78 average rating. Hopefully, we can see that continued here as we go to the Camp Nou. Wallace might want a new contract. Fakir, can you solve this for us? No. How much is Wallace on at the moment? He's on £39,000. Um, okay. It means a lot that I've come and talked to him about his wages, so he's not going to kick up a fuss. He's still got four years left on his current deal. I don't really want to offer him £83,000 either. It's a little out of our budget for our centre-back, and... Well, at least at the moment, we're not in a position where we absolutely have to get rid of him. 
I am a little bit nervous about the fact we've just spent £33 million on Moise Keane. I'm curious, actually, if we just look at the confidence. Um, I mean, the good news is our job is very secure, but I, I just want to know transfer activity, fan reaction. Uh, if we just look at transfer amount spent. Oh, OK, because it's a future deal. We haven't got an evaluation of it yet. Are there any transfers that the fans are loving? They are loving the signings of Moreno and Lengler, which is hard to argue against, and also some of the younger players we've picked up. OJ, start improving, please. Don't go down as a player. That's not what I've brought you in to do. How's Voice in Verdier doing? He's improving, at least. He looks very good at 15. You can see here, Markovic going out to Auxerre, seen as a very, very good loan move. That could be good for his development. I noticed on the flip side, another one of our centre-backs who've sent out, Kanate, they're not so happy about. Um, apparently, they feel like he should be playing for us instead, which I don't think he's better than Lengler or Wallace, and I feel like Marcelo is more than adequate backup. But the fact that he's played six games and he's done so well for Lille can only be a good thing for his long-term development, you know? Like, that's really not something to be concerned about. You can see in terms of players that we've let go, they're a bit concerned about the signing or rather the sale of Marcel and also Raphael. They understand the selling of Raphael because he didn't have long left on his current deal. I feel like both those sales make sense when you look at it really, kind of objectively. Anyway, I'm still I'm still not sure how to feel about the Moy Scheme thing. I'm a bit shell-shocked by it, if I'm honest. It's not a deal I thought was going to happen. And I need to unshell shock myself now because... Is, is unshell shocking yourself a thing? If it, if it is, I need to do it. I think we're going to have to play Romero at right back as well because Tete is just not quite fit enough on 92%. Or is he? I could chance him. Would I rather play him ahead of Moreno? Uh, not Moreno, Romero. That's kind of what this boils down to. To be fair, Romero's played pretty well this year. Despite seeing us ending off as well. well. He's played well, he's he's played well. But we've not played him at right back. So I am going to stick with Tete. With the exception of Fakir who's suspended. It's pretty much a full strength team. We're away from home against uh, Barcelona here. So I perhaps need to think about how I want to approach today's game. I do think I want to try crowding out the midfield. With our kind of crowd out the midfield system. So that is going to be what we go with here. We'll have to see how we get on as this game, I guess, progresses. Apparently there is a concern for Moreno. What, what's the concern here? Apparently it's worth noting that he might find it uh, difficult uh, to, to match up to Barcelona's standard. I mean, that's a bit of a dig on Moreno because I feel like as a whole, as a team, we're a little bit below Barcelona's standard. It's not going to be easy here, is it? Looking at it, they're not necessarily playing a full-strength team. Which is curious. Have they got some injuries? They're playing Abel Ruiz as their starting striker. Have they got injuries? They have. Okay. So, oh, geez. Okay. This is a very good situation now I look at it. So, Luis Suarez is out for seven days to two weeks. Coutinho is out for one to four days. And Messi's also out. They're also missing Andre Gomez and Munir, who's out on loan. So, that's kind of irrelevant. I mean, in the final third, they've looked more threatening than Denis Suarez and Ruiz. The rest of their team is a little scarily good, however. So we'll have to see how we get on. Nobody expects us to get a result. Go out there and enjoy this game. Going into this game, I was thinking, you know, damage limitation. A draw, if we could steal it, would be great. Knowing they're without Suarez and Messi makes me a little less fearful of what they have going forward. And with that in mind, I'm almost tempted, almost, to try and control the game. But... I don't think we're good enough to control the game in terms of personnel in midfield. But I do think if we would maybe to play the more attacking system, this could work quite nicely in this game. But I want to play a more direct attacking style of play. I don't feel like we've got the quality to control the game without controlling 4-2-3-1. But I think this system could work quite well, just given the fact that I'm not too scared of Albal Ruiz as a striker or Denis Suarez. They're certainly not of the calibre of Messi and Suarez. And I feel like we maybe have slightly better player quality than them in those areas of the pitch. So I'm willing to gamble a little bit more. Ultimately, I could play for a draw. I could try and crowd out the midfield. I could try and control the game. But Sergio Roberto, Busquets and Rakitic as a midfield trio is just a little bit intimidating I feel like our best bet here is to try and challenge them and play on the front foot. Try and play direct attacking play, not try and knock it around and be fancy and, you know, choke them out of the game. We need to be 
aggressive, assertive, and we'll see what we can do. Looking at it, half time here, zero chances whatsoever. Perhaps reinforces the idea that Barcelona are lacking a little bit creativity wise. Um, you can see we've actually had the only half chance, but we have been the better team, at least on the face of things. I'm still going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I'm a tiny bit concerned about Toussaint and Ndombele both being on bookings. I'm actually tempted to do a double change here. And in fact, I am going to do it. I'm going to bring in Olmo uh, at centre attacking mid. We're going to give a, a bit of a gamble. We're going, to, we're going to give him a chance. The Spaniard against the Spanish Giants. A chance for him to perform on the big stage. And uh, Lucas Romero is going to come in and play that ball winning midfielder. I know that might seem like a bit of a weird change to do at half-time, given how this game's played out, but I do feel like we do need to throw ourselves around in the midfield. We do need to put in tackles and challenges there. And as we experienced firsthand last year, you might remember, I think it was Juventus it was against, um, it was a close game and then we had a sending off because a player got a booking and it kind of completely screwed us up. So whilst what we're doing is kind of working, I want to make sure that we can keep 11 men on the pitch. Did a bit of a team talk here. We're actually having our first highlight of the game in the 70th minute. Arthur is on off the bench, the uh, the Brazilian centre kind of playmaker. Perhaps a bit of a threat for us to be aware of. But well, we're on the break here. Memphis brings the ball forward. Pass it to Dembele, who probably needs to hit the target there. That was a clear-cut chance that he just kind of panicked in front of goal. In truth, good to see us get the first clear-cut chance of the game. A little bit disappointing with the finishing, but we could have an immediately another chance here. Danny Olmo to Memphis. An ambitious effort. Hits the woodwork. To, oh, I mean, it's offside. It's offside. It would have been a weird goal. In some ways, it's one of those goals where in the match engine you feel guilty that it goes in. But, um, well, a weird effort. Memphis hit it from range and it curved a lot. Dembele probably needs to watch his line a little better there. Um, he has the pace to beat the defenders in that situation. You can see Dembele's had a really, really poor match as the striker in this game. So we're going to bring in Terrier up top. And actually, I'm going to swap him with Memphis Depay. So Memphis is going to play as the attacker. Terrier is going to play as the inside forward on the left. 12 minutes to try and break the deadlock in this game. I mean, look at the stats. Some would have called it suicide to play attacking in this game, but we've tried to be positive. We've tried to play on the front foot. I feel like the least that we deserve from this game is a draw. Late set piece here. Do not... Do not do this, FM. Do not do this. We've had some cruel late goals against us. I think back to the Juve game last year, the Monaco game. A draw away from home against Barcelona is a good result. However, given how that game's just played out, given the fact we've also got Bayern in the group, a win here would have been perfect because Barcelona, next time we meet them, they are probably going to have Messi back. They are going to have um, Suarez back. And I do wonder if we're going to look at that as two points dropped come the end of the group stage that we probably should have got. Nevertheless, despite all of that, that is a draw away from home against Barcelona. And I'm not going to complain one little bit about that. That is a really, really good performance. And I'm pretty delighted, to be honest. Anyway, guys, we're going to wrap things up there from me today. A good little episode. Two 4 0 wins in the league. That win against Barcelona. A new signing as well in Moise Keane for £33 million. Pounds. I'm, I'm thinking that might be a record transfer. He's good. I don't think he's £33 million pounds good. But I'm delighted that the board rate him that highly. They clearly trust the scout report, which I guess I have to now. Hopefully he's going to come good and redevelop into an all-star player, which he certainly has the potential to do, I think. Anyway, let me know how I should feel about the Moise Keane transfer. And uh, I will see you tomorrow where well, we're going to have some big games. We've got Marseille, we've got Strasbourg, we've got the Salzburg game, which we absolutely have to win. And there's a few other big games on the horizon as well. I'm looking at Bayern Munich, PSG, then Bayern Munich again. My word, that end of October, start of November running, and in fact the whole of November, could be a little bit tasty. Looking forward to those episodes on the horizon. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. Do drop a like on it if you have enjoyed and, uh, well, I will see you guys again tomorrow. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.